I got two Perrier, one for each of you. The way to get better at chess for anybody, but especially the people that I'm talking about here, which is most of you, 650 and under, is to play a lot and to not worry about the result, but worry, worry about what you've learned. So I have a funny story, which I've told before. I was at a chess camp and there were two kids who always lost every game. And that's not easy to do at a chess camp, to lose to the other kids who can't play. So that's, you know, thanks trying to learn. Thanks, Thorntro. And, and I showed them this. I showed both of them this. And then I don't know if I showed here or here. I don't know. Okay. And I said, that's checkmate. That's called the scholar's mate. And they were like, well, I said, now, <clears throat> you guys don't win very often. But if you do that, you'll win some because your opponents won't know it. And then you'll win a game. You'll be like, yay. And not only can you do that, but if your opponent tries to do that, you got to try to stop them. And I showed them some ways to stop Queen F7, mate. And they said, okay. Then they played a game, the, the two kids. Okay. And this was the game. Okay, mate. And the kid with white said, mate. And the kid with black said, that's not mate. And he sat there looking for like a minute. He says, oh, okay. Like he, he couldn't find a move. Okay. Then they played again. And the same thing happened. And the kid said, that's not mate. And he looked for it. He says, okay. Then they played again. And the same thing happened. He, he denied it was mate. And he looked... And I, I asked the kid, like, do you play golf or tennis? Okay. So for beginners, remembering stuff is really difficult, as you can see with that one kid. By the way, the other kid was doing cartwheels. He won three games. He's never won before. Nobody's ever been as happy as the kid who won. Um, <clears throat> right. And the thing is, the reason people don't learn anything is they don't understand what's happening. And they are confused when you're showing them. So there's a lot of people who just can't move the pieces. They can't remember. And that's why it's important to play lots of chess. And if you're doing something illegal, your opponent can say, oh, that not. And then, you know, after like 100, 200, 300 games, you can probably play a legal game. Now, <clears throat> People learn at different paces. And so t normally you're learning a lot when you're a kid because you don't know anything. So you're learning. And some kids learn faster than other kids. And in some instances, the kids who don't learn as fast in general, they might learn something else faster, very specific. And kids like to tease each other and they like to one-up each other. So they make fun of the kids who are slower and those kids don't want to play anymore, and so forth. And basically, we live in a world where everybody's mean, okay? And I try to fit into the world, so, you know. Um, <clears throat> but actually, beginners don't remember things because they haven't looked at it 100,000 trillion times. And a lot of people will tell me, you're a grandmaster, so you don't understand what a beginner's thinking. You think when I first started playing chess, I was a grandmaster? I was a beginner longer than most of you have been. Uh, I started, I learned the rules when I was five, and I played in tournaments at the ages of five, six, seven, eight, and nine. I played tournaments all the time. My dad was a master. My brother was always better than me until he stopped playing. And when I was nine, after playing four to five years of tournament chess, I was 1,100. And my first rating was 900. This was back in the 1970s. So. And, you know, I lost every game, basically. I lost and I lost and I lost and I lost. And I remember things like when I was 11-15, I beat a 1581. I was like, yes, you know, a slow game. Uh, thanks for the 300 cent to do TL-73. And w one of the things that differentiates <clears throat> stronger players from beginners is beginners don't remember what happened. So you can't really learn because you don't remember. So for example, you okay? It's okay. 
I mean, if you're a plumber and you have a, an assistant who doesn't know how to be a plumber and you show the assistant something, it says you do it and the assistant does it, then the, then the next day you show the same thing and they do it. And eventually they can do it. I don't know if it takes a week or a year or one day. Problem with chess is it's not one thing that makes sense to a beginner. It's just a lot of stuff. There's a lot of pieces. There's a lot of squares. They all move differently. So if you're a beginner, it's very easy to get frustrated. For reasons I don't understand, and I'm talking about me, thanks for the 100 Cent to Do's Nero fan. Thanks for the sub, Midnight Movie. For reasons I don't understand, I loved chess when I was taught chess. And it didn't matter if I won, lost, or drew. I like going to chess tournaments. I like playing chess. I like playing blitz chess. I like playing slow chess. I like keeping notation. I like hitting the clock. I like hanging out. I don't know why. And so I wasn't good for many, many years. And then as Bobby Fischer said, but not about me, I just got good. And me just getting good was like seven years after how I learned how to play. And I've played 10,000 games and my dad's a master and my brother was better than me. <clears throat> getting good at chess means not giving up. It's also how you get good at anything. And you don't have to learn stuff to get better at chess. To get better at chess, you have to play a lot of chess. And once you've played many, 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 many games, many, you'll learn patterns because you've seen them so many times. You don't have to specifically learn the pattern. You'll just see it. And if you're getting scholars mated every game, which happens to some kids and some adults, you have to learn ways to meet that. And a lot of people forget how the pieces move when they're first learning because they all move a different way. So it's very confusing. And I understand that confusion. Now, the two things I teach to beginners when I was teaching a lot, you guys are beginners, so listen up. If you guys do well this lesson, I'll put you, we'll go to the scholastics, I'll put you in the K9 section. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are pretty young to play chess, but I think you can do it. Yeah, good dogs. Um, but you have to take this off. They don't like, you know, you have to wear a mask, not this cone. <clears throat> I talk to my dogs a lot because they don't type back like I hate you, like you guys do. Yeah. Synthetic Assault subscribed. Narrow fan, 100 cent to do's. All right. So the two things I teach beginners are get your minor pieces out, all of them, and play in the middle. And I say, do that every game. And some of them do sometimes, and usually they don't. But you know, I tell them every single time we talk. And then I tell them, when you can take something for no particular reason, then you should take it. And I tell them if they take something and they're going to lose something bigger, then don't do it. So I show this position a lot. If you're a beginner and somehow you see you can take this pawn... Maybe you don't. Maybe the, moving the knight's really hard. You have to see if it's defended. And I tell my students that when I was teaching. And I say, if I take this pawn for free, can black take my knight? And most of them can find here, but some don't know how the pieces move. And the reason people don't get better at chess, thanks Ivan Karamatsov, is because when two beginners are playing, white will go here and black will just make some random move that may or may not be legal, you know, like here. And then white will play check, and black will go here, because black doesn't see the captures. Black's like, damn, I'm in check. And then white doesn't see knight takes rook, so white plays here. And the games look sort of silly, and the reason they look silly isn't because they're not playing in the center or developing their pieces, which they're not. That's not why it looks silly. It looks silly to you because they're not taking things for free. And most tactics books will show you tactics that are too complicated. Okay? So, for example, this could be in a tactics book. If you're a beginner and you have black, 
This is too hard. And you feel stupid when some person like you, you, says like, well, this is easy. You go check and you take the bishop. How do you not see that? For a beginner, that's impossible to see. For a beginner, it's very difficult to see this as check. It's very difficult to see this. It's difficult to see if you take this that the rook can take back. All that stuff is tough. It's tough. And that's not what I want to teach beginners. That's what I teach to advanced students is things like that. What I teach beginners is, you know, in this position, can white capture anything? And they say, what does capture mean? And I'm like, I don't know. Okay. And if they find that, and I say, is that a good move? They're like, yeah, I, I captured a pawn. And I'm like, right. And if I say in this position, black can't capture the pawn, and they agree eventually. And I say, after here, black can capture the pawn. How can black do that next move? And these kinds of things are impossible. If you're a beginner, and in your mind, you're like, I'm going to move this pawn somewhere, and then I'm threatening that. That's way too complicated. That, that's, that's not beginner stuff. That's advanced stuff. Beginner stuff is, can you take this? That's beginner stuff. Beginner stuff is, oh my God, I didn't see that. I forgot pawns take that way. So if you're teaching <clears throat> a brother, a sister, a wife, a husband, a father, a mother, uncle or aunt, or a friend of yours, how to play chess, they don't remember how the pieces move unless they've played hundreds of games because moving the pieces doesn't really make a lot of sense. The pawn goes one or two squares, then it can only go one. It captures a different way. And then you're supposed to calculate and figure out if I take, can black recapture? And that's just too hard. You can't, you can't expect that of a beginner. If you told a beginner you should go checkmate because the king can't move anywhere. They'll believe you. They won't say, oh, well, excuse me, teacher. Why can't I go here and block it? They're not going to say that. They're going to be like, oh, yeah, it's me. You're right. Because it's too hard for them. Those are puzzles you should show a beginner. You should say, if black plays here, can white take that pawn? And if they're like, no, you're like, yeah, you can. And they're like, oh, that's right. Pawns take that way. Or they'll deny that you told them that. Like, you didn't tell me pawns can take that way. Hey, you probably didn't either. And if you say, this is check, is that checkmate? They'll say yes. Then you'll say, no, it's not. You can block. And they'll go, oh, can I block this way? And you're going to get frustrated because they can't remember how the pieces move. If you play hundreds and hundreds of chess games and you're not playing very well, you'll learn how the pieces move. And that's the first step. And the basic calculation of taking something is enough tactics for a beginner. The beginner should be taught, what can you take? And this is actually very common with chess teachers, not just me. Okay, so I'll set up a position like this. And I'll say, okay, it's white's turn to move. Show me all the captures. If you're a beginner, there's a 0% chance you can show all the captures. Zero. And some of them will suggest this. Some will suggest this. Some will suggest that. And they'll frustrate you as a coach. Chess is just really difficult. If you've played hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of chess games, like most of you have, that's not hard for you. But when you first learned chess, you didn't know what the hell was going on. There's just a lot of stuff happening. And when you're teaching, you have to realize your student is having trouble seeing the legal moves. So for me, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. White has six captures. And if you told me I was wrong and there was seven, I would believe you because I didn't do like a deep study. That's just my first inclination. And black, as far as I can tell, has two captures. One, two. For a lot of people, for most of the world, that's difficult. And so when you teach your students made in two and how do you do a fork, you're starting way too hard, way too hard. One thing I did 
It was, I'll show students a position where somebody's in check and I'll ask them, how many illegal moves do you have? Okay, and this is a good example. So I bet Mike Cummer, who was about 1750, $5. And I said, you can't tell me the correct number of legal moves for white. And I'll give you two minutes on the clock. And that's your first answer. So he's thinking there, he's taking his time, he's re, and he's like, okay, I'm done after like a minute. And he gave the wrong answer and I won $5. And that's a good puzzle for a beginner is you're in check. How many ways are there out of check? And there's a 0% chance they'll get them all right. Zero. Zero. And for you, that might be easy, but it's not easy for them. It's hard to see that this knight can block in two places. This can, this can, this can. It's just hard to see. Terrible. Let's see. There should be six, but I only see five. So I'm getting confused. Is this even the right position? Yeah. Two, three, four, five. There's only five. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think Mike Cummer said five and there were six. Did I show him a different position? I might have shown him with the pawn on e3 so he had king e2. And now I don't know. I mean, this was like 11 years ago. I can't remember what happened. All I remember was I got five bucks. Maybe I told him there was, I told him there was six and there were five and I took his money. <laughs> Thanks, Tony Howell. So if you're a beginner and you're not sure how the pieces move or you're not sure how to capture or you're not sure what checkmate is, that's nothing for you to feel bad about. That's very difficult. Everything's very difficult when you don't know it. And... If you're 1,500, in your mind, grandmasters are great at chess, and why don't beginners see anything? What's wrong with them? And if you're 2,000, you're like, grandmasters are great. Why is this 1,200 so bad? Why can't he be as good as me? And everybody has different life experience. Everybody thinks differently. Everybody learns at a different level. And a lot of people just haven't played a lot of chess. So if you told me somebody played in 10 chess tournaments a year for 30 years, and they've played 100,000 games on the internet in those 30 years, you know, if they were rated 600, that would be odd. It's possible. Possible. If you told me you taught your friend the rules and... They played 10 blitz games on chess.com just having learned the rules and they were 1800. That would also be odd. <clears throat> you have to learn at your pace, not at the pace of people you know. Maybe you're faster, maybe you're slower. And you want to, if you're teaching a beginner or you are a beginner, you want to do the simplest things possible. Okay. So here's, a, here's one that I like to show my students also. Okay. I tell my students, and when I say students, I mean previously when I taught. I tell my students, black has a lot of moves here that are check, and one of them's checkmate. Can you show me all the checks? If you're a beginner and you've just learned the game and you haven't played a lot, there's no way you can show all the checks. Zero percent chance. And if you're teaching somebody, you want to show them like this is check, this is check, and they'll be like, oh yeah. And even if you're like 15, 1600, your first guess is going to be wrong. Sorry. You have to like really hunker down to like see how many checks there are because there's a lot. So you just put, you know, a red mark on a square where there's a check. Sorry. And then, okay, here obviously with the bishop. And then here. And I probably missed one. I don't see which one I missed, but I might have missed one. I thought there were 10 from teaching previously, and I've put markers on 10 squares. There could be one I'm missing. I doubt it. Am I missing one? It's 11? Wow. I still only count 10. The missing one? Could be. 
ATC Faust is confusing himself. Then you ask which one is checkmate and they, there's nothing. Because for a beginner, these moves are all the same. They don't, they, don't, they, don't, they don't know what's going on. They don't even know if this is legal or this is legal. For you, it's easy, but for them, it's not. And that's because they have to play a lot and get used to positions where they're in check and how to get out of check and so forth. And these kinds of puzzles are very difficult for a beginner. And most teachers and most videos online and most books, when they're for beginners, everything is way too hard way too hard and if you're teaching beginners and you're making things too difficult they're, they're not going to like chess because you're not teaching it right and the same goes for math in high school if you have a really good math teacher in high school you will like math if you don't you will not like math and it's basically in high school where it starts um, and I've had teachers in high school that couldn't do the math they were teaching us and then I had ones where they explained everything perfectly. I understood everything. 